Hey everyone, it's Dennis from Florida Native Fishing Channel. On this video, I'm going to show you how to make a three hook deep drop rig or a chicken rig. Um, this rig is, uh, you know, super easy to make at home. Uh, it's a lot cheaper than buying one at the tackle shop as well. I noticed, you know, at the tackle shop, these rigs can range anywhere from, you know, $15 to $20 a piece. And I've noticed that a lot of these rigs have a lot of extra components on them that I feel aren't necessary. Um, things like glow beads, glow um, sleeves. Um, octopus or you know squid skirts which you know I don't think those are necessary I feel like they just add too much to your rig and kind of add drag on your on your rig as well um, this is kind of what mine looks like um, it's pretty bare bones and you know straight to the point um, some of the fish we target on these rigs are any type of fish that's gonna live anywhere from 400 feet out to 1200 feet so uh, snowy grouper Yellow edge grouper, um, blue line tile fish, golden tile fish, black belly rose fish, and you know we've also caught flounder out that deep, which is you know seems kind of rare, but we've caught them on multiple occasions. We've all, we've also caught cobia on the bottom in 500 feet, and a whole bunch of other types of fish. You just never know what you're going to catch when you're deep dropping. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll get into making this rig. Thank you. All right. First thing you're going to need for this rig is your leader. This is a Momoi Extra Hard 220 pound. Second thing you need is your swivel sleeves. These are diamond swivel sleeves, number two size. To me, they're the best ones you can get. You're going to need eight of these aluminum sleeves. Snap swivel for the bottom of your rig to attach your deep drop weight and then hooks. For this video I'm going to be using these 80 laser sharp eagle claw hooks. Um, I like these hooks, they're not very expensive and they get the job done. I also like the 70 eagle claw in the, in the silver finish. I actually prefer these but for the video I'm going to be using the 80s and the black nickel. I just feel like these, the silver finish on uh, the hook, doesn't rust out as quickly and I just like it better. I like the shape of this hook a lot better. I just wasn't able to get any more. All right, I'm gonna get started. First thing I do is I'll slide on all of my swivel sleeves first. And I slide everything, I put all my components on first before I actually cut the length of the rig um, because I don't really like to waste any of this leader. It's not cheap. So this is the way I do it and I found this is the best way to do it. I'm sliding all the the uh, three sleeves on. Next I'm going to attach my snap swivel to the bottom. So you're going to take your sleeve, put it on your line first. Um, always attach the sleeve first before you put your hook or your swivels on or else it's not going to work. Loop it around. A nice little loop here. So you have some leeway here and some movement. I'm going to use my crimper here. This is a Danko crimper. Just your basic crimper. It works great. So as far as knowing which rung to put your sleeve in, all these have numbers on them. And then it goes according by the size of your, your sleeve. So in my case, I'm going on to the third rung down for the you know, appropriate size aluminum sleeves I have. So you'll place it in the sleeve or in the crimper this way widthwise crimp it down be sure not to crimp it too tight because you don't want to damage the line in this case this line is very um, durable so I'm not really worried about that plus it's 220 pound so it's, you know it's plenty strong enough I wouldn't call it overkill I just use it because uh, I've had issues in the past with going with 150 and I'll explain it, explain that in a little bit so to get my length, I use my fingers like this, from thumb to pinky. For my first hook though, from the bottom, I like to go up maybe an inch or so from where my snap swivel is because I like to have my, my last bait a little further away from the structure and away from my weight. Just because I wanna try to limit how many times I get snagged on that wreck. These wrecks are very big and they're easy to get caught on. So there we go, crimp one, crimp two. 
I'll also explain to you here in a minute how we fish, uh, how we deep drop fish because the way we do it's a little different from most. So here we go. Tip of your pinky to your thumb. So that gives you about, you know, the, the right length away from each other. And it kind of makes it uniform. Crimp one, crimp two. I'm going to repeat that process. From pinky to thumb for your length. Put that, put your finger here so it doesn't side up or down, or down for that matter. Crimp one, crimp two. I'm going to do the same thing here. This is where I'm going to make my loop to attach, where you're going to attach your swivel going from your rod. So some people I see, they'll attach, you know, a swivel to this top area with their loop, but I'm just going to do a basic and just make a loop out of the mono, about that big, and crimp it. Uh, the reason why I'm not going to add a snap swivel, or sorry, a ball bearing swivel there, is because the swivel that's coming from your rod is already ball bearing swivel, so it's kind of overkill to have that there. So now we've got all the components on our trunk line. Now, what I'm going to do is my branch lines here. Here we go. I'm going to attach my first one swivel sleeve, or sorry. Aluminum sleeve through the end here of your swivel sleeve. Little loop. There we go. Very easy. My length is going to be just like, it's going to be the same length apart. I'm going to use the same measurement as I did to space out my swivel sleeves. So you don't want them to be too long because then they run the chance of getting hung up on each other. One. So I'm going to do all of my branch lines first and then I'll go ahead and attach the hooks and I'll tell you a couple stories about why I do what I do. And you know if you're fishing for other species like blue line tile fish and such I would suggest going with a little bit of a smaller hook. And you can also get away with a lighter leader there because, you know, there's not as many grouper and stuff out there that can possibly break you off on their gill plates. I also enjoy making my own rigs. It's, you know, it's just kind of relaxing and it gives you something to do the night before you go fishing. And when you catch some good fish on these rigs, you know, it makes you feel good about yourself and, you know, you feel accomplished and you feel like, you know, you did something. Instead of buying one for $15, you pretty much make this for probably under $5 yourself. And you learn something. There we go. I'm going to attach my hooks. These are 8-0s. You can use 7-0, 6 -0. When I'm going for blue lines, I'll my hook will be a little smaller. It'll be around a 6-0. Um, this rig is going to be primarily for grouper and, you know, um, snapper, bigger snapper, like American red snappers that we catch up to 17 pounds. So, so here's the top of my rig here. I like to make sure my hook point is facing up. I'm going to attach this here. And what you want to do, put a pretty decent loop at the end of your hook so your hook can move freely. I've seen people tighten these down and you know the hook sitting straight out it doesn't move freely when you have the hook moving freely I feel like it gives well I don't feel like it I know for sure it makes it easier for that hook to catch the fish in the corner of the mouth if it's not you know doesn't have any movement the chances of you hooking that fish in the corner of the mouth I think it goes down drastically also I feel like with the loop here it gives your bait a little bit more, you know, movement and action down there when it's, you know, flopping around or in the current. So the reason why I go with this 220 pound 
is because, you know, I used to make this rig out of 150 pound test. And, you know, we had an occasion once we were fishing off of Palm Beach deep dropping in like, I think it was 500, 600 feet of water on this particular spot. And I was bringing, you know, I hook, I hook a nice fish and I'm bringing it up. And on the way up, about three quarters of the way up, you know, my line goes, you know, I feel like it really light. So when the hook or my rig gets back to me, I realized that that fish had broke me off about right here and it was a clean cut. So I'm like, what the hell happened? Um, sure enough, uh, five minutes passes, you know, we all get our lines up and we're about to move the boat to reset. And I look out about 10, 20 yards out and I see a f something big floating belly up. As we approach that fish, I realize, oh crap, that's a big grouper. I grab that fish. My hook, about this much of my leader, and my hook is hanging out of its mouth. And sure enough, it's a 22-pound yellow-edged grouper, which is, to this day, is still my, my biggest grouper ever. And for our area, or for pretty much anywhere, that's a trophy-sized yellow-edged grouper. Um, that fish made my day, and, you know, I didn't care what happened the rest of the day. I was, you know, very fortunate and happy that we found that fish because... It's a fish to be proud of and one for the ages. Um, if you look at my profile picture on my channel, that is the fish. That fish probably should have never made it into the boat, but, you know, luck was on my side that day. So, here we go. Our rig is done. Let me show you it. Three hook, deep drop rig. Made that in what? Didn't take more than like six, seven minutes. I'm just talking a lot. So it normally takes me five minutes to make these rigs. And it's probably under five bucks to make this rig. Um, and you can make it how you want. If you want to put squid skirts, you want to put glow uh, glow sleeves and um, glow beads, you can do that. I've done that before. I mean, I've never done um, the glow um, sleeves or the um, squid skirts, but I have put glow beads on my rigs before. Um, you can also, you know, use lights when you deep drop. A lot of times I don't use lights uh, because, you know, the fish eat down there all day in the pitch black. So I don't think a, a light's really necessarily needed. Uh, also, another um, tip I'm going to give you, when me and my buddies deep drop, we don't just set our rods in the rod holder and set it and forget it. We drop it down. We use Winthrop butts so we can straighten the butt out, hold it in our hand, and we can kind of pick our weight up. And know where we're at on the wreck and know if we're on the wreck because you can feel it and you can you can move your bait around and your rig around to wherever you want or you know if you if you drop your um, weight down you feel like you're not on hard bottom you're on a softer bottom then you can go ahead and kind of spool your line out kind of like your bottom fishing for snapper and um, we find you know move being able to move our our baits around and our rigs around it's really helped us a lot and it kind of in a way i think helps you not get, get hung up as much but you know just to, i mean you're going to get hung up it's inevitable when you're fishing these deep wrecks it's impossible not to get hung up if you fish fish all day and don't lose a rig that's a good day so that's why i will make three to four of these rigs the night before i go out and make sure you bring a good amount of lead with you we normally use anywhere from three to five pound stick leads and make sure you have multiples of each because you don't want to break off <clears throat> and then be stuck and then not be able to fish anymore so we're bringing like 10 to 15 pounds of lead with us when we go out and uh you know that's it thanks for uh watching and if you have any comments or anything just put them down in the comments and i'll be sure to uh, get back to you and answer any questions you may have thank you